coming up, smoking ban. American University considers making the campus smoke-free, but not everyone agrees. And the swine flu vaccine is in. But where can you get it and how many American students are sick? We've got an update. District Wired News starts right now. Good evening, I'm Ashley Murphy. And I'm Caitlin Hilliard. Some students are trying to get smoking banned at American University. Kim Aron has more on the story. Campuses for Clean Air Campaign is pushing for a campus-wide smoking ban on all D.C. University campuses. At AU, Colleges Against Cancer is leading the initiative. They are conducting a survey and trying to get a petition signed to make AU a tobacco-free campus. The concern is about passive smoking. Uh, there is increasing scientific evidence that passive smoking can cause problems. Some students think a smoking ban would be beneficial. I've been trying to quit for the past year, so I uh, cut back the amount of cigarettes that I smoke per day. So if it, was banned, if it were a ban on campus, I would be really happy. Other students don't think a campus-wide tobacco ban is practical. I think their courtesy zones idea that they had a few years ago, as you said, was uh, probably sufficient. I mean, shouldn't be smoking five feet in front of the doors of the buildings, but uh, the idea of banning it on all areas on campus seems a little bit ridiculous. The CFCA would like the universities to have a complete ban of tobacco on all campuses. Alan Duffy said if smoking is banned at AU, there will probably be designated smoking gazebos. For District Wire News in Washington, I'm Kimberly Aron. Smokers might have to hunt out new places to light up. The D.C. City Council proposal could let D.C. business owners put up no smoking signs, banning smoking 25 feet from the front door. The proposal will also make it a crime for someone under 18 to carry tobacco. The new rule is supposed to discourage young people from smoking and protect non-smokers from secondhand smoke. And we have an update on swine flu. The vaccine comes out today in Indiana and Tennessee. The government spent $2 billion to purchase 250 doses of the vaccine. They pledged to vaccinate everyone in the U.S. if there is enough demand. States began ordering the vaccine last week. And a total of 7 million doses will be available by the end of this week. The number of H1N1 cases at AU cannot be confirmed. But so far, 32 students reported flu symptoms during the past week. With the fall semester halfway over, some students not only stress about midterms, but about their roommates. Mackenzie Colling has more. I think roommate conflict can now get it taken care of during open mediation hours. 100% of the participants said they would recommend the service to a friend. So we're excited about that and hope students will keep using it. These sessions are part of a new test being implemented at American University. The bulk of the conflicts are roommate conflicts, but it's not limited to roommate conflicts by any means. Staff members hold these sessions in the residence halls, and those interested can also make appointments. People can go out for help with any type of conflict-related issue they are dealing with. Matt Colling, District Wire News, Washington. And the president may not see the Dalai Lama when he visits D.C., but AU students will. The Dalai Lama will come to campus this Saturday. His Holiness will talk about finding wisdom in the modern world. His teachings will emphasize methods to achieve well-being. College graduates are in luck. A recent study shows the government will need to hire an estimated 273,000 employees for positions over the next three years. The Department of Homeland Security will meet with students at American University today to discuss and give insight on federal careers. American University Student Government Senate approved Alan Chang as is a student governor's new comptroller. Chang was approved by a 19 to 1 vote. As SG comptroller, Chang will oversee the SG budget, including the auto van and bike lending programs. The office has been vacant since early September. Coming up after the break, bike theft. DC bikes have a new home. A massive bike dome ensures that your bike stays yours. And a new addition to Metro makes it a little bit safer for all of us. Stay with us. Violent crime dropped significantly in the district this year. The total violent crime rate dropped by over 6% according to statistics from the Metropolitan Police Department. Less than 100 murders have, recorded, have been recorded this year. Compare this to nearly 140 murders this time last year. 
The D.C. Police Chief credits new laptops, PDAs, and online distance learning programs for the dip in crime. Metro Police told the Washington Post that the statistics are encouraging. In 1991, D.C. was known as the murder capital of the United States. And speaking of the crime rate, bikers in downtown D.C. will soon have less to worry about. Anna Tuman has more on the story. On any D.C. street, and you're bound to see a scene like this. Bikes hooked up to poles or locked onto parking meters. But now D.C. residents will have a more secure option when it comes to parking their bike at Union Station. The Bike Transit Center is a $4 million city project that will open in October. Located at Union Station, the center will feature 150 enclosed bike racks and 20 outdoor racks. It will also have changing rooms, lockers, and a bike repair shop. So are D.C. residents excited? I think it's really cool. I think it's good that the, you know, the city's trying to accommodate the needs of bikers. So what's the appeal to bikers? Well, in one of the top 10 worst cities for bike theft, it's good to have a second option for where to secure your bike. I would like to use it, but I might defer to people who are commuting. I bet it's going to be totally filled. It may be really tough to even get a For only a dollar a day or $100 for a full year around the clock access annual membership, the center just might be packed. So what are your other options to keep your bike safe? Lock the bike to something that's immovable and stationary. Um, in some cases, parking meters work well. Um, in many cases, there are still extra bike racks around, uh, sometimes like a stop sign or some sort of street sign as long as it's firmly anchored and it's very tall so that somebody couldn't lift the bike up over it. And uh, at that point, you're going to secure it with a really good locking system. Um, most every customer that comes in here that has a bike is concerned with uh, bicycle security, uh, getting things stolen. Uh, it happens a lot. Um, uh, I would say one out of three to four customers have had a bike stolen. Bottom line, whether you're an avid biker that plans on buying a membership to the new center or just biking for the day, make sure to secure your bike up. This is Anna Tuman reporting from Washington, D.C. Bar hoppers beware. D.C. cabbies in Adams Morgan are protesting the new meter fare system. The cab drivers are refusing rides between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights, the busiest nights for the district's premier bar scene. It is unsure how many cab drivers are involved in the protest. Homeland Security is giving nearly $30 million to Metro Transit for new surveillance cameras on buses and trains. The cameras will also be installed in ventilation shafts and at station entrances. Metro officials say video surveillance will help with crowd control and crime. One of Harry Potter's favorite games is coming to AU. Freshman students on campus are starting a Quidditch club. The wizard game has been adapted into a real-life version where players dodge balls while running with brooms. But don't worry about wearing your Gryffindor colors. Players are not required to wear any costumes. If you are interested in playing, an information meeting will be held tonight in Ward 1. And that's all we have for today. I'm Caitlin Hilliard. And I'm Ashley Murphy. Have a great evening.